This illustration deals with uh, common uh, supply equipment, NEC 225.30B. Now, the purpose of change here is uh, uh, kind of long, but I think the information is very valuable. So the purpose of change, this is a new subsection, and it's been added to prevent more than one feeder under very limited circumstances. So uh, if we have more than one feeder, we have to go to 225.30B and justify it. Then, and, and I'd like to point out it's the same rule in 230.2 for services if you have more than one service. They're just requiring feeders to have the same regulations. This new text will permit up to six feeders to supply a building or structure under the following conditions. Each feeder must originate in the same panel board, switch gear, or other distribution equipment. This provision is safety driven in that all the feeders supplying a building or structure are not only required to be in the same location, they must be located on, from the same distribution type equipment or in the same distribution equipment. Each feeder must terminate in a single disconnecting means. This revision mainly prohibits the application of Section 225.33, which permits up to six disconnects from a single feeder. Now, this is important, and we'll kind of review that. Where more than one feeder is installed in accordance with this section, all feeder disconnects in the building or structure supplied are required to be grouped in the same location. Each disconnecting means must be marked to indicate the load served. This regulation or this revision uh, simply permits multiple feeders with each a service disconnecting means supplied instead of a large feeder with six disconnects. Now that, you know, that that's different from what some of the designers have been doing, and we want to look at that. There is no need to limit the size of the feeder conductors as they will be uh, protected by their ampacity ratings. Additionally, the revised uh, section will permit multiple smaller feeders with smaller conductors and lower rated overcurrent devices to allow the uh, designer to reduce the level of arcing energy uh, in 70E, NFPA 70E. Uh, now, notice what's required here. Looking at the illustration, I can have six feeders run out as shown, but they have to terminate in individual disconnects. Now, this is, this is a rule that we find uh, that's a big change. Notice we used to could take a feeder out to this uh, and set an auxiliary gutter with this uh, feeder uh, one at the top and then have six switches under that. They'd run another feeder out, hit an auxiliary gutter, have switch, uh, six switches underneath that. This rule prohibits that. You have to terminate in a main that would regulate the load that you would not exceed this feeder. So say you had four alt conductors run over here in the top feeder, terminating in a 225 amp main. Well, that'd be four alt conductors, good for 230 amps, and a and 225 amp fuses, and that would protect those conductors. It would connect uh, and protect the equipment when would not, uh, in other words, uh, allow overloads that could cause damage. Now, if you look at the first disconnect supplied from the top, these disc disconnect switches in the same location per 225.33 and 225.30B. Now, uh, that, that's very important, but notice these are run outside, see? So we're in Article 225, uh, not 215. Now, if you want to get a, a look where you could run where they would run over and just set an auxiliary gutter instead of this switch at the top and then put six switches under it. Just, just go to the next illustration and look at those taps to disconnects and you'll see why this was a bad rule to start with because I could uh, 
have an auxiliary gutter where every one of these switches are and then put six switches under it. And you see how many switches you'd have there? Uh, if you counted that, that'd be six times six. That's 36 switches. So they wanted to get away from that so they could regulate the feeder ampacity and the amount of load that you would uh, actually uh, put on that. And then notice if you were... Uh, say the service entrance conductors, 230.42, that you see at the service, if that was a feeder from the substation, then, you know, you could have many mains as you wanted it, as you wanted to put in there. You wouldn't be limited to any number of mains by 225.32, exception one for industrial centers. Well, we have it in note one. If you look at note one to the left at the top, Section 225.30B allows one to six feeders, but it says also C 225.32 exception one, where the number of feeders is back in the substation, uh, where you have six mains, but where you feed in, then you could have more. But this is where you're feeding uh, from your service equipment up, and you see that uh, that's a new rule now. So you'd want to look at that uh, very carefully and uh, just what. All is included in this new rule. And the note number two states uh, to review bullets in 225.30b in the above text to make sure that we uh, do not uh, install these uh, feeders from one building to another building or a substation to uh, another building where we would not follow the rules of 225 dot 30 B so that is a big change and uh, this section makes all designers well aware of it